Good morning everybody, welcome to Mortal Gaming, this is me again Marvin and we're now here for another video for Ragnarok Origin and this time we're going to be talking about the Warlock because this is the more detailed and the full guide for the Warlock and also take note that some of this may change when it comes to global so we're still not certain of all of the inputs here but then again as long as we are prepared as much as we can for the uh, jobs then it will be the best case scenario the first thing that we have to talk about here is the stats for the stats of course this is level 150 already so the first thing of course is 99 int for the dexterity you have to gauge on your bonus stats here the total must be around 150 to 160 to gain the 100 reduction on variable casting so in terms of variable casting and fixed casting it's one of the pros of the warlock it doesn't need that much global cooldown fixed casting reduction and uh, casting reduction because the cooldowns the casting animation and also the variable casting of the skills are pretty much very low so it's already considered very good next everything else will be put on lock so that uh, you could get additional magical attack for the skill builds there should be three skill builds that are mainly used in this server the first one is the fire lightning build the second one is the ice earth build and the last one would be the ghost build so the elemental uh, warlock here is represented by the fire lightning okay so that concerns with the meteor and the lightning skills because these are combo skills so you need both of this in your auto skill and it's somehow a very good thing because all of this has cooldown but it also has a delay meaning when you cast this skill you have two seconds before you can cast this again but you have one second the cast delay is really low so you can cast another skill aside from the comet so you can cast crimson meteor and lightning combo interchangeably and that would give you more damage okay so i understand that sometimes it's not applicable for the the enemy because sometimes if you are attacking an earth enemy the fire damage is going to be plus 100 percent but the lightning or the wind uh, skill is going to be lessened but it's still okay the warlock has a way for you to catch up to those you know to those less damage with your elemental skills so crimson meteor five on that lightning combo you can put five also on this or you can just uh put four and then put one on the soul transmission this is really important for some occasions of the Temple of Nightmare and also on PvP. So if you are not accustomed to teleporting or you just want to run, so you could put 5 points on the Lightning Combo. So every time that you cast Crimson Meteor or Lightning Combo, you can cast the Comet Impact or the Chain Lightning. These two go together because the Chain Lightning burst out the Scorching Effects and it gives out conduction effect on the enemy while interchangeably for the comet it bursts out the conduction effect on the enemy and gives out the scorching effect so when you cast comet and chain lightning they burst out two times of a uh, huge damage and the dot or damage over time will be exploded so this gives you huge dps so this is already the shining point and the pinnacle moment of all of the magic users out there and this could really one hit even the toughest rune knights all right so 10 on both of this 10 points here 10 points here and the next tetra vortex as compared with the ragnarok mobile tetra vortex is different here in ragnarok origin it's a buff it allows you to cast the the bigger stuffs without cooldown so you could uh, cast them uh, unlimited and uh, this will last depending on how many elemental energy or elemental orbs 
you have already gained and you can gain those orbs every time that you cast this uh smaller stuff the crimson meteor and the lightning combo and you can additionally get more orbs depending on the level of stargazing okay so we'll be uploading another video about stargazing then next the big big burst is going to be the reading spell book so in the reading spell book you could put different types of skills that you have learned and put it here so you can only put a total of 50 points amount of skills with corresponding points to them so you can only put like uh, two comets and two chain lightnings so why do you want to put both of this and not only comet because you have to also put conduction in order for your comet to explode the dot on the conduction and whenever you put scorching on the enemy using comet it's not gonna go out unless you use chain lightning so these two skills go hand in hand so you always have to put them here every time that you cast reading spellbook it's gonna cast all of this skills at the same time so that's a huge burst okay so and then as what i've told you guys the last one is the soul transmission now for the next build the earth and ice build it's going to be the same with tetra vortex reading spellbook and soul transmission but this time you're going to use marsh of abyss and glacier nova glacier nova being the one that you have to choose putting only four points on it or max it out and opt to not put any point on soul transmission so the marsh of abyss enables you to use earth strain whenever you cast it and glacier nova for glacier hell so the good thing here is that this skill build is used by the mid spenders or the utility role on your guild if you have a utility role on your guild this is the best thing best skill build for you because aside from slowing the enemy continuously and almost immobilizing it you silence it and you silence it and reduce its magical attack and physical attack values so it's basically disabled so whenever you use reading spellbook on a stack of enemy on a large scale pvp they're all going to get slowed and silenced and not to mention this also deals damage okay so aside from that we have the third build the third build is the ghost build okay the ghost warlock so in this server sadly the ghost warlock has lost its touch so the te telekinetic area turns you into a somewhat a god and resets all of your all of your skills ghost skills uh, so that you could uh, cast them again and combine it with reading spellbook it's gonna be a huge huge burst on the enemy but it doesn't have that much debuff and it's all about bursting and what if more and more people are using neutral element on their armors you're pretty much going to deal less damage 30 percent reduction on your damage so it's not viable on this server but we'll still see on the global server when it comes out so you put five on soul cast one on soul transmission nine on soul release because you need uh, one point on soul transmission five on reading a spell book and when you go to reading spell book you only put the white prison here because the soul explosion uh, it's up 20 of your points here okay and then five on telekinetic area and last five on white prison okay so next let's go for the equipment and the gears let's discuss about the gears here is going to be the best weapon that you'll ever see released for the magic class and that is going to be the thanos weapon or the thanos staff so good news here on the kr server the thanos staff is two hand staff is a two hand staff but if you're going to be looking at your current mythic gears or mythic weapon staff weapon you would see that the thanos staff with the coming soon details is put on the single-handed staff or the one-hand staff and not on the two-hand staff 
That means that the Thanos staff is going to be one hand on the global server and you can still use a shield. And you can choose now between Thorn Staff of Darkness whenever you are grinding and on Thanos Staff whenever you are doing MVPs, dungeons, TON, or even PvP. In grinding, the gravitational field is still the best for the Warlock. The gravitational field stays on the ground for a longer time and the damage is instant and it's fast. So, what is so good about the Thanos staff? Look at this. Int plus 10, magic damage plus 5%. Whenever you refine it to plus 6, where I think everyone has it at least plus 6, when you use elemental orbs or elemental energy, you can increase your skill damage to plus 6% and you can stack it up to 3 times. That means a total of 18% and that lasts for 10 seconds. That's a huge uh, buff already. Next, you reduce the target's magic defense by 20% and max HP by 20% whenever you put burning, conducting, collapsing, or extreme effects. So the extreme is from the glacier, the collapsing is from the earth skills, the conducting is from the lightning skills, and uh, burning or scorching is from your uh, comet skills. So whenever you use this, you reduce the, the defense of the enemy by 20%. I'm not sure if both burning and conducting the enemy would reduce their magic defense and it stacks to two times. So it would reduce to 40% would still have to check on that. Or if you know, kindly comment in the section below. Next on plus 15, the maximum stack of total attribute damage increased by consuming elemental energy is now 6 times. So it's going to be 6% times 6 stacks, 36% increase in skill damage. Aside from that, when attacking wind, earth, water, or fire attributes, there is a 15% chance to convert your enemy's element to the element you are powerful against so if the enemy is neutral you can you have 15 percent chance to convert it to earth element if you are using the comet uh, skill so that takes away that downside of using both uh wind and fire element at the same time because most of the time you'd be just converting it to the opposing attribute so it's gonna be best for your character add this to the vero score that we're going to be talking about in a while okay on plus 18 you get more damage on your fire skills plus five percent so this one gives you the chance to deal a huge burst on your fire and lightning build okay so that is the Thanos staff. For the armors, of course, it's still going to be sprint set if you have them less than plus 15. But if you already have them on plus 15, I would suggest for you to go for Magic Master set. That is the end armor set for the Warlock. For the shield on PvE, it's Book of Lies. And for PvP, it depends. You can go for Orlean Server or the Thorny Buckler. For accessory on level 95, it's still the set of Lament of Fensalir. For the level 105, it's the Valkyrie or Gindal's set because it's gonna increase your skill damage by up to 20% when it stacks four times. For accessory wares, I'm going to only base this on the wishing gacha, existing wishing gachas that we have. Okay, for headgear, I'd suggest for white lily. For face gear, stylish glasses. For mouthwear, it's gonna be gray mask. For backwear, it's floral elven wings. For costume, it's either poker night or fancy night for the enchants for the enchants of course the weapon is still going to be magic boon you won't need any reduction of fixed cast time anymore because the fixed cast time is already 0 0.08 it's almost auto cast so magic boon is the way to go for both weapon and accessories for armor on pve of course it's pve technique for pvp it's counter crit for shield, again, it's counter crit. For garment, it's anti-magic damage. For shoes, it's anti-physical damage. 
for headgear and backwear on PvE or even on PvP, you can go for superior magical attack. On PvP, you can also go for PvP technique. For face gear and mouthwear, for PvE, it's PvE technique. And for uh, PvP, it's gonna be improved physical defense. For costume, PvE technique for uh, PvE and PvP technique for PvP. For the refines, uh, of course, you have to prioritize getting your weapon to plus 18 because it's an additional damage to your character. For the accessories, you need them to be plus 15. For the armor set, your goal is going to be plus 15. Now, for the cards, of course, the weapon is still the damage modification cards. Size being your priority, next race, and then last would be elemental cards. For the armor gears, Cornutus card is still the best for PvP and elemental cards depending on your enemy. And Argyop card, just in case there will be a lot of guillotine cross on your enemy. And then for the shields, it's going to be Arclus card because we prioritize physical damage reduction over magic damage reduction. And then Alice card and then Thara card. Now for accessories, it's still going to be Greatest General, one Greatest General, two Wraith cards, Osiris card. Next is Headgear. For Headgear, it's gonna be Carrot card, Marduk card is a must, G-Earth card, and the Veruchi card. G-Earth card, most of the PvE uh, dungeons, and then the Veruchi card for PvP. Now, for your Divine Traits, for the divine traits for the weapon, I would suggest prioritize ignore magic defense and then PvP damage bonus and then last would be magical attack and PvE da damage bonus if you still have slots there. For the armor and garment, PvP damage reduction, P physical defense and magic defense and then last PvE damage reduction. For the shields, it's going to be physical defense and magic defense and then the last would be physical damage reduction and magic damage reduction. For the shoes, it's gonna be movement speed, physical defense and magic defense and then physical damage reduction. For the sigils, I would suggest for your active PvE to be primal and then radiant guardian for PvP. For passives, it's going to be Impale for the higher tier players. And for PvE, Meteor, Soul Reaper, Berserk, and Immortal Body. You still need Immortal Body even on PvE. For PvP, it's going to be Chosen One, Immortal Body, Surging Protection, and Swift Breakout. Okay? For the Cogwheels. The Cogwheels, of course, in the KR server and Global and Taiwan server are different. So here, it's so much harder because the third job class have Smeldon. And considering how rare the Smeldons in our server are, it's hard if this was the one implemented in our Global server. But good news to everyone, we will be having a Matrix engine or the Nexus engine which is this one, okay, in our server. And the items here are the ones that is going to have the Warlock Verus cores. So the Warlock Verus cores here on the KR server will be transferred on the Taiwan server and on our global server right here below. And trust me, it is easier to get this, okay? So with that, we are left with a couple of cogwheels that would be best for the Warlock. Number one being the Element Inside Protocol. I'm not sure about the translation, but kindly correct me on this. The Element Protocol is the one that has a 15% chance for you to change again the element of the enemy to the counter element that you are using so that you will deal bonus damage. So the next one would be Core Overload. Third is Mana Length Boost. And last would be Psychokinesis Boost since you're still gonna use gravitational field from time to time when you are grinding. For the Matrix or the Nexus engine, you will prioritize first the elemental amplification. This one, every time you use an elemental energy or elemental orb, the Warlock's overall attribute damage increases by 20% and it lasts for 10 seconds. And not only that, this can stack up to five times. Okay, next 
is the Spiritual Ability Conversion Device. The Warlock's damage is increased by 35%, Magic Defense ignore by 10%, and it will last for 10 seconds when you blow up the scorching effect or conduction effect on your enemy you are gonna be increasing your damage by 35% and ignoring additional 10% of the mag of the enemy's magic defense this is a lot that's why it's going to be needed on your nexus engine and so that is all once we have new data or new updates on the warlock i'm sure that i'll be updating this guide in the future but as of the moment this is it i do hope that this video and this guide has helped you thank you so much for supporting the channel and Thank you so much again to Sir Kobe for lending me his OP character. And that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. If you haven't to like this video, please do leave a like. Share this to your friends and click that bell notification button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Start a new stream or a new content. That's it. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye.